Check, check, one, two, five, four, three, two, one. Rock this place to the maximum. This is the official post-event press conference for EFC 95 from the EFC Performance Institute, Johannesburg, South Africa. Welcome to the EFC 95 post-event press conference and what a fight night we just witnessed. I could be mistaken, that's probably one of the best fight nights we've had. Seriously, every single athlete showed up. When Kyra and I were going through the fight card trying to work out who gets fight of the night, we were, we were stumped. I mean, every single one of the fights on the main card showed up and, and, and was a great fight. So we're giving uh, performance bonuses and rest tonic bed sets to the following athletes. Now, this might be a bit of an outlier, but Tyrell Lowe, we're giving you a bed set and a performance bonus because without you, that fight wouldn't have been what it was. You kept it going. Thank you very much. What a hell of a fight. Peace. You are getting a bonus and a, perform uh, and a, and a bed set. And HP Fun Starred, and you are getting a bonus and a performance and, and a bed set. What a great welterweight fight. Additional bonuses will be awarded to Mark Ewan and Vince Bembe. Awesome. And the fight of the night is awarded to the featherweight clash between Vince Bembe and Keir Harvey. Incredible. Incredible. Let's cross over to media. Graham, the first question is I'm going to put you on the spot. We spoke to Vince. He thought he did enough to win the fight. Keir Harvey thought he did enough to win the fight. I just want to ask your opinion on that majority draw decision and where, as a matchmaker, you want to see both fighters go to next. Okay, so, it, you know, I don't want to be politically correct here. My, I had Keir winning the fight. That's my opinion. But the reality is, did Vince lose the fight? No. So it's like they both showed up. They both put on a hell of a war. And uh, I think obviously Kia's a little bit gutted that it didn't go his way, but we got the best out of it. We see it as both of these guys going forward and, and putting their heart and soul into this uh, promotion. And if I can say anything, 
I think what's making EFC what it is right now and, and the caliber of athletes is that guys like this, regardless of the situation, never give up. They just keep going, keep going, keep showing. And, you know, he's going to go all the way to the top. I think that there's definitely uh, contendership in line somewhere down the line. Would I like to see a rematch? Yes. I like, we need to conclude that. Staying uh, with that uh, Ke Harvey and uh, Vince Pembe fight. Ke, going into that third round, you spoke yesterday about managing how you were going to deal with going late into the fight based on your two previous fights. You looked visibly gassed going into that fight, taking a lot of deep breaths. From our point of view, that's the way it looked. Uh, looking, thinking back on the fight now, is there a little bit more that you could have done to maybe absolutely convince the judges that, uh, that you actually won that fight? Mate, to be honest, I think I need to actually kill the person to win a decision here. But, yeah, I was tired. As I was two rounds in a, a pro MMA fight. You're always going to be tired, but I didn't feel too bad. I've worked really hard on preparing for the altitude, and I did feel better. The thing that took more out of me was, one, soccer kicked me in the head, and two, it hit me with about 10 illegal elbows. That took more out of me than, than anything else did. And let's be honest, we know, I won the first two rounds. Like, two judges gave him the first round for being stuck under mount. And then almost getting arm barred. Like, good job, mate. You done well to win that round. The second round, mine again. And uh, the third round, it, all he done was hit me with illegal strikes. So, brilliant. Well done, mate. I wouldn't be opposed to a rematch, but in, in my eyes, I beat him. So why would I rematch him? Like, all, all he done is... I've had 21 MMA fights now, and that's the most fills I've had against me. So, he's a dirty fighter. I won that fight. Is what it is. Vince, I'm going to put it straight back to you. He's just accused you of being a dirty fighter. What do you make of that accusation? Um, I didn't kick him on the head. It was a kick him on the, on the end. So... What I can say is that uh, you can say whatever you want, but the thing is, the best man wins, and as for this now, there's no one that wins actually, so it's a throw. But what I would like to do is that I would like to have a rematch with him, and I'll just to prove it to him who the fuck the real I am. Well, there you go, Graham. Rematch is made, huh? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a good fight to make again, but Kia has a point, you know. Uh, is it worth doing again? I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm going to have to sit down with the guys and, and discuss it. I'll discuss it with Cedric. I'll discuss it with Kia, and we'll see where we go. Okay, so I think next question, Ashley. Um, I, think, I think the... Oh, yeah. I think the build-up to, to your fight with uh, Tumisang... I think a lot of people were expecting a massive back and forward bout between the two of you because you definitely. Okay. So, actually, in the build up to the fight between you and Tumisan, I think many people were expecting it to be a much longer back and forward bout. Um, you guys both stepped into the pocket very, very early. You threw hard. Um, you both got clipped. You seemed to be clipped the most. Were you surprised at that point that he was going to shoot for the takedown? Yeah, the last thing on my mind was that he's going to take me down. Um, I was actually enjoying the stand-up scrap. He did hit me with a couple of good shots, um, but I was enjoying it. And when the takedown came, I had the wizard, and then I thought one arm, the guillotine was there. I was just going to take it. Um, but he's a, he's a champ of a guy. He's old school. I've got a lot of respect for him. And, um, yeah, so I just want to thank him for the fight. Uh, MMA is like a Russian wife. She either loves you or she doesn't, you know. So it's just one of those things. It could have been a 15-minute scrap, 50 minute scrapper or a minute scrapper. It is what it is. But, I, yeah, I enjoyed it. Tumisan, coming straight back to you. He's just said that MMA is like a Russian wife, and at the moment she don't love you at all. I mean, you're on a seven-fight skid. 
Well, I mean, your last three fights, you've had three different camps. What's going on with you? What do we look to see the next version of the president the next time he pitches up in the cage? Uh, I'm unmarried and I hear you guys talking about wives and so on, so I'm about to talk about pitches and how they for the streets, right? <laughs> But yeah, uh, but yeah, honestly, um, as far as that's concerned, you know, just goes to show, you know. Um, I saw Ashley some years ago, he was losing, you know. Um, I witnessed him win here for the first time. I was thrilled, put on a winning streak. Um, and it just goes to show, you know, if you work hard and you're consistent, your time will come. As far as me, um, I believe as long as I'm still working hard, my time will come. It's always my time, you know. Um, like I say, I'm always living a dream, man. Um, wanted to do this from as I was a kid. Um, never could afford it. Now I get paid to do this shit. It's unfortunate that, you know, I got to lose on TV and so on. But uh, that's my journey for now, you know. That's my journey for now. I'm still here. And yeah, man, we're still fighting to the top. Let's go. Next question's for Mark Ewan. Mark, just give me an idea of, were you surprised at Adrian Sanchez's durability? You hit him with a lot of strikes. He kept coming back. Uh, you finally took the W, but were you surprised by his resilience? And just talk us through the fight from your perspective. No, I wasn't really surprised, to be fair. I knew I was going to get him out there eventually. I would like the first round finished, if I'm honest with you, but I was just, I was just getting used to being under these lights, feeling that, which you're just experiencing it. And the second round, I feel like it was just a, a matter of time before I, before I got the finish. Mark, staying with you. Um, in terms of your first outing here at EFC, what's the ex experience been like? And have you been able to sort of leverage a little bit off the experience of, 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 of Kia ahead to prepare yourself for what you were going to face here? I've loved it, man. It's been an amazing experience. That's been one of the best weeks of my life, being out here, doing the full fight camp, staying at the capital and stuff. It's been an amazing experience. The organisation has looked after us very well, and I'm, and I'm truly grateful for that. As for Kieran, obviously, my coach Kieran, they've been out here before. So they were able to school me on what it was like and things to watch out for. And obviously, me and Kieran are working on the altitude. So when we got here, that didn't shock us too much even though I still, I still felt it. It's something you can't quite... I don't believe you can train for that. I think you need to come out here early and really experience it. So I'll probably do that next time. Maybe come out a bit earlier and do a good bit of training before I actually fight. But yeah, it's been a, a tremendous experience. And I believe you'll see me out here in October and December as well because I want to stay active. And obviously I've signed the AFC, so you'll see me again soon. All right, thank, thank you very much. We're going to wrap up... Uh with this side of the press conference and get the champ and the contender up here. Thank you very much, Kia, Mark, Tumi, legends. Incredible fights. Vince, wow, man. Taking everything out tonight. Thank you, brother. And Ashley, thank you, mate. Awesome. Okay. We're going to cross over to... Um, the co-main and the title fight, and hear from those guys. I think we can start off with uh, questions for HP. Harp here. Am I sitting alone here? Oh, you this piece. You're sitting, you're sitting with your opponent. I'm sitting in peace. Yes, no, you're with peace. No pun intended. Peace be with you, buddy. Um, let's fire over to the media. Uh, well, first question is for, for Arpia from Stardin. Uh, Arpia, an absolutely fantastic fight. What did you make of your opponent going into it? And what, what did he prove to you as a fighter? Because it was a hell of a war. He is such a tough guy. Honestly, my whole career, every fight I've ever been in, I felt like even though maybe I lost to like a split decision, something happening, I'm still dominating the fight. But um, I don't know, I've got some reflecting to do. I'm not very happy with 
how it turned out. I'm, I felt like he was <laughs> overpowering me. He's such a beast. Um, I went for those submissions. I thought I was going to get him. But uh, yes, he just powered through them. And every time I thought, okay, this is the one. This is the one. This is the one. And every time he just gets out. So um, honestly, dude, you're such a beast. Honestly, I, I didn't expect that. I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be an easy fight. But yo, that was the heart of a lion, dude. Much love, my friend. You just... Uh... You're just as much of a beast, man. You're just as much of a beast, man. I, I really brought it to you, man. And uh, the stuff that you were worried about, I really wanted to test it that you were really worried about. And uh, man, great fight, man. Appreciate it. I, I thought I was the wrestler. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's the standout, isn't it? That, you know, we heard in the build-up to this fight exactly what was going to happen. We, we knew the pedigree of wrestling. And this man showed up, and uh, I think he was on par, man. He showed everything uh, in his arsenal, and, and big, big, uh, big, big up to you. And, and another thing, I didn't want this fight to happen so soon. <laughs> I could have waited a while for this to happen, but, you know, it was kind of written in the stars, and now I'm glad it did happen, you know? Peace, just coming back to, to if you now think back on the whole fight, third round, uh, both of you are really tired. You've really put it in. Um, he's put a rear naked choke around you, uh, and 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 you've walked out of it. Um, I don't know. HP probably getting a little bit demoralized, trying to choke you out. Not going to happen. And it seemed at that point, from my perspective anyway, you were on top. And then one little mistake, and he takes your back, puts it in again. I mean, you're going to have some nightmares about that. Man, it's a, it's, a, it's a game of inches, a game of margins, man. He, he, he was the better man tonight. He, he saw, he caught me away with the hello mistake that I made, and he capitalized, and I can't take nothing away from him, man. Um, he's a great warrior. Uh, good luck on your Walter Way title fight, man. Um, I, can't, I can't take anything away from him. I went in there. We both went in there. We did what we did. We brought it to each other. And he was a better man, man. And I just want to say thank you to EFC, thank you to him. Uh, HP, thank you to my team, also Tinkerbell. We did, we, we ticked all the right boxes and uh, definitely did show that we did tick it right. It's just a game of margins, man, and a game of inches, man. And uh, he took it away from me. And uh, that's, that's okay for, for now. It's sad, but that's okay here for now. Congrats to him. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm going to keep my head up. I'm going to keep my chest out, my shoulders up. And uh, I'll be back in there um, as soon as possible. Before we move to the champ, I just want to get some clarity from Graham because I don't see two losers here from that co-main event. I'd see two future champions in the EFC without a shadow of a doubt. Can you just give a bit of clarity? Our Pierfin starred in kind of uh, motion towards it, but what's the next plan for the welterweight division? Who will our Pierfin starred and face next? Okay, so it's a, it's. There's a lot of moving parts in that division because it's so top-heavy, right? You've got Zico at the top, and I think what's happened is Zico hasn't really committed to defending his title. So it's putting a stop on being able to f have that division flow forward and guys take on title sh shots. So uh, ideally, it would have been great to have Mark Hume versus Zico, uh, Jose de Rocha versus Zico. With Zico out of the picture and coming back and forth and not really knowing whether he's going to defend or not, I thought, let's do Jose and Mark Hume. Mark had to go for surgery, so Jose's sitting without a title fight, right? But he's been promised one. And that's why, based on timeline, it could happen that we put HB and, and uh, Harpier and Jose together. Let's do and it's beautiful. Timber. There's a lot. There's a lot of things happening in that division now, which I'm, we, it's, we're fortunate to have that problem. Let's do December. Um, if Dorosha, Dorosha, whatever, can't fight. Dorosha wants to fight in September. That's the okay, thing. He wants to fight, fight soon. Let them fight. I'll, I'll fight whoever. Well, I said I'm focused on my game, my game plan. I don't care who I fight. I'm always focused on myself. I'll take whoever in December. UFC 100, biggest fight card ever. I'm going to take the title. So, Graham, just to clarify, 
it's not interim. It will be for the welterweight strap. Oh, no. It, it has to be. If it's not Zico, it has to be interim. We, we're not going to strip him of his title at all. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a long-term negotiation we're in with him. You know, so we want him to fight. He's, he's our champion. He's flipping awesome. We just need to come to the table and come to an agreement, which I think we'll find, find soon. Peace, coming back to you, knowing the landscape in that division now, who do you feel is next up for you to obviously redeem yourself? Not that you need redeeming, but obviously you want to get back into the winning column. But anybody, can, anybody can get it. Anybody can get it. Um, Man, listen, I did, I'm an, I'm an incredible athlete. I know that for a fact. I didn't come here because I was handed over anything. I came here, I'm at this position that I am because of hard work, because of determination, and because of grace. And I'm not gonna take anything away from myself. I've worked really hard to get to, to where I am, to sit to where I am right now. It's nothing but work and grace and faith. So whoever can get it, this loss is, I've been, I've, I've been choked out, man. I've been, I've been kicked in the head, you know, and, and I still went forth and I still be, became champion. So I'm not gonna take anything away from myself. I'm not gonna take anything away from my team. Uh, we are just gonna go back, work, and wait for the boss man to call to tell us who's next. That's it. I, I, I can throw a span in the works show. It's a bit of a weird one. I just want to be honest with everybody so that they know the lay of the land. We've got Cole Henning, who's going to be fighting Joe Cummins at the end of the year at ESU 100. Joe wants to defend his title. And he's thrown quite a big spanner in the works saying you want to tune up fight at welterweight prior to that. Because there is a long run, you know, the six months up until then. And there's no way, we, way I, I would like to see Peace and Joe fight. I think a, a Peace, and, Peace and Joe would be a great fight. Uh, I don't know, say... October. Just throwing it out there. See if it catches. I love that fight. Let's move over to the, the champ, Iga Cabeza. Iga, I didn't get a chance to get you to respond to that incredible call out that happened on the fly in the hexagon. You got the belt, you're newly minted, and immediately Nerik Samo's teammate calls you out. What did you make of Cameron's call out? Uh, wow. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Sai. Okay, first things first, guys. Thank you, Lord, um, for putting us in this position right now. I mean, we worked hard. Thanks for all the hiccups. You made us the better man that I am today. Um, carrying on to Simon's um, question. Look, um, I, I've, I know how it feels like to have a target behind my back. It's nothing new to me, you know? Um, CIT's got a lot of up-and-comings, a lot of guys that think they, they're learning new skills and they think their skills are working and it's going to defeat everybody. Unfortunately, the skills that they are learning now, we already mastered them, you know? They're only getting it right because the guys that they're fighting is not that good. But anyways, um, look, the kid wants to fight. We can make the fight happen anytime. Um, I mean, I had plans. I already spoke to Graham about my plans, you know? I wanted to fight Exxon. Um, as it is right now, his plan is to fight me. My plan is to rematch with Exxon. I want Exxon. I mean, I hope you're seeing this. <laughs> I'm um, gonna call him out everywhere. I'm gonna try and make sure that fight happens in December. EFC 100, I am a legend. <laughs> I am king EFC right now. Feels good. I wanna fight, I wanna fight Exxon. I want Exxon to come back. I want him, I saw his fight at PFL. I saw he lost. If I'm not fighting with EFC, I wanna fight him wherever he is. I wanna fight Exxon first. Um, but yeah, I mean, the kid's got plans. Good for him. I've also got my plans, you know what I mean? And now I've got no time to prove who's the better one because I know I am the best. He's still learning. I'm already there, you know? Um, so, yeah, I want to fight someone like Exxon. I feel like that's the one for me. Three times. Three times EFC for a champion. Nobody's ever done this. Right now, you're talking to the man that has just made history. Absolutely. Absolutely. Today, I can tell you now, all the little kids out there, all the young ones, everybody that's trying their best, every time you wake up, you've got the chance to make a difference. Stand up and believe in yourself. You'll get it right. You'll get it right. Graham, question for you. Obviously, witnessing that call out, hearing what Igus had to say now, knowing full well that Cameron's got other things potentially cooking over the pond. Um, 
What sort of position does that put you in as a matchmaker? Eager wanting to do the big one at 100. Uh, you obviously want to keep the division going. You want to keep that title flowing, either defense or moving somewhere else. Eager might be a fourth time. We never know. Um, what kind of position does that put you in as a matchmaker to actually keep this division the top of it going? Well, well it's, it's no secret that the featherweight division is, is blowing the lights out right now. I mean, like, there's so much talent there, um, and, it, and it really helps having a top champion like Iga there, to be honest with you, because it's great to have a target on your back, Iga. I mean, you, I mean it's, no, you're nothing new, it's nothing new for you. You've had no. this for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know that there's been uh, promotions that, that want Iga to fight, which is great, you know, one fight deals overseas and things like that. I'm hoping that we push in the direction of the UFC for him and get him to where he needs to be, because I mean, he should be there, you know, in, in many ways. Um, as much as I love the Cameron fight, I mean, <laughs> and my matchmaker hats, I'm like, oh my God, that's gonna be so awesome to watch. But it also needs to make sense for him and his career. Um, and yeah. We've got to sit down and table it. It, it. All this type of stuff, when it gets thrown at us on the night, like you really want to absorb what you're going to deal with. But are we all excited to watch Cameron Simon and, and Iga Cabeza? Yes. I mean, there's not one person that wouldn't watch that. Um, but I think Iga wants to, yeah, we've got to sit down and work what he wants to do. Yeah, and no, I think there's, there's bigger things down the line, Graham. I'm not here to show off or like, argue with a kid <laughs> you know what i mean his career is still young he's got a lot to, to go through he's got a lot to learn and it's good i mean i'm not taking anything away from him he's a good fighter he's got great heart and he's pushing hard and it's amazing to watch him to fight you know what i mean but at this moment i'm sitting in a position where my career is just elevating to another level i'm in the position whereby where he is right now everybody wanted me to go overseas and fight overseas and I choose the path of let me grind down and fight more, get more all the experience that I need to get, make sure that I'm actually ready to go there, you know what I mean? And not just jump the gun because everybody's excited to see me fight. Learning new things doesn't mean that you're good, it just means you learn something new that somebody else didn't know. Mastering something is a different ball game. So it's, it's just one of those things. Like, I mean, if you look at Nerik, take nothing away from him, he's a very good fighter. He wrestled his last fight, but then he couldn't wrestle now. It's, it's, it's not about learning how to wrestle, it's about mastering the wrestling. It's, there's small little things that you need to understand before you think you can just step up with anybody, you know what I mean? And it's, I'm not taking away anything from anybody. Guys are good, guys are learning, and that is a good thing. Just make sure you learn the right way and you fight the right people. Don't bite off an apple that is too big for you, you know? It's just one of those things. Well, let's, let's ask Narek. Narek, you've made so many people proud, the way you carry yourself in victory and defeat throughout your entire EFC career. Iga said something in the cage to me in the interview. He said that Reynaldo Exxon lost, lit a fire in his belly, and that that might do the same thing to you. Is that fair to say? Um, I would say so, because, um, like I said uh, on the pre-fight, his resume, like, how can you not be motivated to fight someone like him? At one point in your career, you want to know where you stand. So, you know, um, I felt, you know, right now, I can't really say I, felt, I feel proud of myself because it's, it's too itching. But yeah, you, yeah. you should. Uh, you, you put on a hell of a <laughs> Yeah, fight. yeah, but then, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it happened. You know, I don't want to rather know how, like, for example, rather me know from learning from a loss than sitting with that, you know, curiosity of like, what if, what if. So, yeah, I think from, you know, like you said, everyone has that turning point. So hopefully with me, it's this one. <laughs> Thanks. Merrick, Merrick, staying with you. Um, Iga, Iga made a point there that obviously your last bout before this, you spent a lot of time wrestling with Kia. And obviously, you've now spent a lot of time wrestling with Iga and very, very different outcomes in both of those bouts. I mean, for the kids out there that are listening and watching this, it's kind of clear that there are levels to this game. I mean, you came into the fight knowing exactly what Iga was going to give you, um, and it seemed you didn't really have too many answers to unlock what he was throwing at you. How does that play in your head when you've trained for something that you know he's going to give you, and then he does give you exactly that? but you have no way to sort of counteract it? Um, um, like I said, um, with the wrestling with Iga, the plan was, you know, how can I say it? Um, 
try to not to wrestle on his terms. And at one point, like, uh, like um, at one point, the plan was, you know, wrestle at our, our terms. But then I think I might say maybe the moment got into me, then I started wrestling on his terms. That's why at one point I felt he was turning and, yeah, I should have just, you know, be calm, collected, and, you know, maybe attack more from the bottom. So, yeah, it is what it is. You know, we win and we learn. Uh, Graham, another one for the matchmaker on the spot. What would be next for Nerik Simos for you? Uh, Nerik, who do you want to fight? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same thing. Everybody's got a target on his back now because they're like, that's the guy winning against Iggy and pulling a hell of a show. So he's going to have a wide open opportunity. I mean, I'd love to see the Tumisang Madiba fight's going to uh, happen with Shan Fantonda. Bradley Swanepoel's uh, knocking about. There's a lot of fe uh, uh, featherweights that are going to be looking at Nerik now and they they're going to try and bench themselves against him which is scary because in that fight near every single shot Nerik could have landed something that was dangerous and he looked so dangerous so scary fighter anyway Graham final question from my side looking ahead at next events um if we look at the next two events and and, and having spoken to Cairo as well EFC broadcasts on Thursdays um can you talk us through that change I think for the fans out there, I think I understand what it's all about, but I think for everyone else out there that maybe doesn't know, EFC is now going to be on Thursdays on a monthly basis until possibly 100. Well, you, you, you'll just never have to worry about uh, clashing with the rugby again. Let's put it that way. It'll be nice and easy. You can switch on EFC, come out to, on a Thursday night. It's great. So it's better for all of us. We, we had th Thursday nights in like the early part of our business, and it was an incredible fight night. And I, I think us owning Thursday fight nights, it's great. It's, it's our exclusive spot. Um, I mean, everybody wants to come to these shows. Nobody wants the excuse that they can't come because of some, some situation. The athletes don't really mind, um, and it works better for our business. And, and broadcast. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for joining us at the EFC 95 post-event uh, press conference. Join us live for EFC 96, uh, 96, 11th of August, Thursday, Zulu vs. Sosa 2. Thank you. EFC 96 sees the exhilarating champion Lutando Pico defending his belt against the Brazilian brawler Magno Alves. After a thrilling recent knockout victory, Popeye now faces the 125 pound king from Coberra. Plus, in the co-main event, a controversial duel reaches its final conclusion as Gian Souza takes on Nakazumulu Zulu in a rematch of one of the most exciting fights in African history. EFC 96, live from Johannesburg on Thursday, 11 August. Broadcast and ticket details at efcworldwide.com.